but enough about me. Bunny, how are you? How are you doing? You doing good? I'm okay. I'm hanging on, you know. Okay. Okay. How was your week? How How was your week? How was my week? My week was okay. 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 How how's you how was your week? I see what you're trying to do, Bunny. I see the writing on the wall. You're trying to break up with me, aren't you? No. I see it coming. I see the signs. No, I'm just late because I, I I forgot to watch Rhapsody, and and I, I I I could not do the show without watching it first. Excuse me, Rhapsody Street Kid, even Santa, and the of uh, both both uh, Bella and Natasha have things to say about that as well, especially Natasha. Not as much Bella; she's more scarred. Yeah, Natasha Natasha is more pissed. <laughs> I, I I didn't know Dire Straits put out a video. <laughs> it's like a, the world's first uh, Christmas special made entirely with Sims 1 technology. Yes. Yeah. Bunny, um, I I wanted to start off asking you how you were doing, asking your how asking you how your your week has been. Bunny, uh, you're living under a rock. Yes, I am. How's that going for you? Going good? Uh, I think it's going good. So I'll come out from under the rock sooner or later. Okay, all, all bugs to explain. Do. What what we're talking about, Bunny, is a sort of I, I I guess a sort of media diet. Yes, or perhaps a social. Media. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I, I mentioned this about two weeks ago on the podcast. If you're, um, if you're a forward-thinking liberal progressive, then it's a fact. Living in the United States is depressing as fuck right now. Yes. And pretty much the only way to escape the President Trump blues are A, drink heavily, and reports do show that there's been an increase in alcohol consumption in America, so I'm not wrong. And, or number two, just live under a rock. So Bunny is living the life right now. But yes. I worry, Bunny. I worry. <laughs> I worry that some of these smaller news stories might fall through your crack because, to paraphrase the dude, Bunny, I'm worried that you're not privy to all the new shit. So here now, Bunny, is what I have, uh, what I am calling a Pope on film news smattering. All right. It is a smattering of news bits, but not fully grown news pieces, bite-sized news, travel-sized news, thusly a news smattering. Uh-huh. First first off, um I guess if we're talking about the news, like the biggest news story is Doug Jones and Roy Moore. Yeah. And the whole Alabama Senate race. I when I, I I I kind of avoided all of the Alabama Senate news the on that day because I was at work. I didn't want to be obsessed with it and constantly refreshing browsers and, or whatever. So when I got home, I just searched hashtag Alabama uh, Senate race, and there was all this crap going on. And so it, it seemed when I first got on Twitter that that it looked like Roy Moore might win it by a small margin and so i, I, started I thought posting. he was gonna i really thought yep. he was gonna yeah yeah me too so i started posting all of this uh anti roy moore roy moore stuff and people started getting pissed at me one specific woman posted a, a picture of a binky and she's like uh uh here you go winning is it, losing is hard on babies so here oh. you go baby Roy Moore won. Get over it. And she posted this because you would of, rather or you would rather I, a fucking pedophile in office than 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 a Democrat than anybody else. What the yeah. fuck? So she posted this image of like this woman holding a baby in and giving me the pacifier. And so I tweeted back to her. Your candidate Roy Moore is already trying to date the baby in this picture. Yes. And she got pissed off, and it's like, you liberal witch hunt l- lost. Get over it. And I tweeted, that's funny, witch hunt is the term. 
that Roy Moore uses when he's hitting on little girls in witch outfits during Halloween. Yeah. And she's like, I hate you. Stop it. And I'm like, oh, that's my favorite Bible quote. And that's what caused her to block me. Yeah, nice. But then, like, two hours later, Doug Jones wins it. So I sent her a, a tweet. I'm not sure if she got it because she blocked me, but I sent her a tweet anyway. And it's an image of Donald Trump with a binky in his mouth. And I just wrote the same thing back to her. Mm -hmm. Here you go, baby. Losing is hard for babies. Mm -hmm. it, it, it felt like a really great win. Some people were really pissed off at me. <laughs> Good. But you, you don't want those I was people really... liking you. What? You. Oh, yeah, Natasha. Natasha wrote this thing on Twitter, and it was all about, um, what was the specific tweet? Like, it was, it was a real angry one. I said, the only reason. Natasha Roy said, the Moore only reason that Roy Moore is pro-life is, pro is, is because, he wants to fuck the, it, it, yeah, it's because he wants more, like, kids to fuck or something like that. <laughs> So, so this this person got really pissed off and started arguing with Natasha, and he called him. He he's he's the self proclaimed angler preacher. What the fuck does that mean? He Apparently, fishes? he he has a YouTube a, the account. The, the only so that there will be more children in the world he can try to fuck. Yeah, more children in the world he can try to fuck. So, so the guy is the angler preacher, and yeah, he has videos where he's fishing. And also preaching the Bible. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm so I'm I'm working on my own YouTube account. I'm going to be his, his Twitter is at Bass Chaplin. At Bass Chaplin. Yeah, he's the Bass Chaplin. Oh he boy. fishes and tweets. I'm going to be the uh the jack off preacher. I'm gonna have these videos of me jacking off while also Spreading the word of Jesus by talking about my favorite Bible quotes. Nice. That's going to that's gonna be my thing. So they got into this big argument, and it, her her uh, thing with the bass angler ended positively, and that's good. Because if Misha Collins were to see her uh, Twitter account, which he probably never would, but if he did, then he'd be very upset that Natasha went negative. He would so be she disappointed in me. Yeah, he would be disappointed in, in Natasha. So she ended it positively. However, my angry conversation with uh gays for Trump yeah. did not go so positive. This guy was really upset with me. What what happened there? It was his it, it's his belief that that just uh he supported Roy Moore because Donald Trump supported Roy Moore because Donald Trump is a huge, is a very positive person for gay people because Hillary hated gays. Well, she did hate gays, but but that's besides the point. What's Hillary have to do with it? I mean, his main thing, which he kept saying over and over again, which is which is that it, it, number one. Apparently, the dad of the uh, Pulse nightclub shooting went to a Hillary Clinton rally and somehow made it on the stage behind Hillary. That is a fact. That actually happened. Really? But, yeah, but it was it, the gays for Trump guy on Twitter's belief that Hillary Clinton personally invited him because uh, Hillary loved the fact that this guy's son killed all those gays because she hates gays. And I'm like, okay. Uh, you're getting into Alex Jones territory here, guy. Yeah. Just FYI. You're getting a bit crazy with your conspiracies. Anyway, um, so that was fun. Um, it, there's news today that apparently M Morgan Spurlock has admitted to a number of uh, sexual assault allegations, including rape. Really? Okay, who is he now? Um, the name is familiar. He's he's the super size me guy. The, oh, okay. The, yeah, the, the super size me guy. And um, I don't want to say that I'm really excited for sexual assault allegations. But I will say this. I hate Morgan Spurlock. And I have <laughs> always hated Morgan Spurlock. It's true! 
this guy sucks and his documentaries are all bullshit. Yeah. And so I'm not saying I'm really excited for these sexual assault allegations. I'm just saying I'm excited to see this guy go down is what I'm saying. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Also, did you hear about Quentin Tarantino and his news, Bunny? No. Okay. Quentin Tarantino has been under the thumb of the Weinstein company for basically his entire career, which is super gross because yeah. who knows where Harvey Weinstein's thumb has been. Mm-hmm. That's gross to be under Harvey Weinstein's anything. Yeah. You know? It's just gross. So, but now uh, Tarantino's free from the Weinstein company. And his next film, I think, is with Sony. And anyway, being free from the Weinstein company seems to have revitalized Quentin Tarantino. He's hard at work on his new film about the Manson murders. And uh, and this guy, this guy, Quentin Tarantino, this is what he does. He's so energized about being in film now that he doesn't have to um, be quiet about a hideous, hideous man. Yeah, he's he, he feels so happy now that this is this this guy. He goes to Paramount, and in a Tarantinian fashion, he's like, hey, man, look, look, man. Let me tell you my idea, all right? Let me tell you my idea. I've always had an idea for a fucking Star Trek film. (laughs) Yeah. Let me tell you my idea for a Star Trek film. And so Paramount says yes. They did? Well, they got to do something with Star Trek. Yeah. He was just as shocked, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, Natasha's right. I'm assuming that Tarantino was just as shocked as you were. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. Tarant- Tarantino was like, wait, you said yes? <laughs> Did Star Trek Beyond bomb that bad? So anyway, <laughs> now they've got a team of writers at Paramount hard at work on a script for Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek movie. There's even a possibility that he might direct it. Patrick Stewart. And now has come out and said that he he would never do another Star Trek movie and he would never do Picard again. But he would only if Quentin Tarantino directs the film. Really? Okay. That's Tarantino might might direct this Star Trek film. He did Quentin Tarantino. The only thing that's known about it is that it was an original idea by Quentin Tarantino for a Star Trek film, and Tarantino got the guarantee that if they do make this film, that it has to be rated R. Oh. Okay, it's getting more interesting. Yeah, so so that's all that's known is that it's an it's going to be an R-rated Star Trek film that they have a team of writers working on now. An original idea by Quentin Tarantino. He might direct it. Patrick Stewart's on board. Yeah, that's all that's known. He might direct it. This might be the first thing that he's directed that's not entirely his. The best part about this is that Quentin Tarantino Star Trek. Those jokes write themselves. Yes, they do. Those yes. jokes are like shooting fish in a barrel, but the barrel is also made of fish. Mm-hmm. I am already picturing uh, Picard calling people motherfuckers. Yeah. Each and every member of my Starfleet owes me 100 Klingon scalps. <laughs> and I want those scalps. That's not even like a like that's not a brilliant joke, but it's it's just so easy. Yeah, to come up with some of these jokes. Let me tell you what it's like to fuck a Ferengi bitch. All right, <laughs> so easy. Hand me my phaser. Which uh, which phaser is yours? It's the phaser that says "bad motherfucker" on it. Uh huh. <laughs> Bag of phaser. Sure enough, there's a phaser that says "bad motherfucker" on it. My the, my favorite one that Natasha helped me with is uh, wait a second I'm Mr. Pink why do I have to be Mr. Pink <laughs> your axon you're a being made of nothing but pink smoke you're literally just pink yeah but just because I'm a alien being made entirely of pink smoke does that mean I have to be Mr. Pink that's a bit on the nose why can't I be Mr. Black nobody's Mr. Black. <laughs> The only difficult thing I see about Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek is how they're how are they going to get John Travolta to say all that science technical mumbo jumbo? Yes. Hey, number one, we need to recalibrate the 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 
Galaxian crystals. <laughs> oh, and what about the soundtrack? Across a hundred and tenth quadrant. That's a good one. Uh, the only boy who could ever please me was the son of a Romulan. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and my favorite one that Natasha helped me with. Girl, you'll be an ensign soon. That's another good. That's that's another good creepy Roy Moore song. Girl, you'll be a woman soon. Yes. Anyway, they're not even. They're not even. They're not even great jokes. They're just so easy. They're they're stand up comedians in L.A. right now using this as their entire set. You know, <laughs> I imagine. So, so Melania Trump. Yes. Moving on to the next news smattering. Melania Trump is having a hard time right now finding clothing designers. Apparently, uh, Melania Trump is going to balls, having these events, and she wants to be dressed in the finest outfits. And there are all these fashion designers, you know, uh, who are saying no. They refuse to. Really? Yeah, who will design clothing for Melania Trump? So many famous clothing designers are liberal progressives who don't want to be seen supporting the Trump administration. Now, hear me out, Bunny. Okay. okay? Hear me out here. Okay. I'm going to explain to you why this is bad and why all of these famous clothing designers need to be making dresses for Melania Trump. Okay? Okay. It's real simple. Real simple. Look. What would the Supreme Court currently deciding whether or not a Christian cake designer can refuse service to gay people? <laughs> what would the de- yeah. yeah, yeah. What would the Supreme Court deciding whether or not it's okay to completely discriminate against someone because of your own personal religious beliefs? Maybe it's not helping matters to have liberal clothing designers refusing to service. Melania Trump on the grounds that we'll see Melania. If I do that, then I would be supporting you. And I don't want to do that. And it's my right as a clothing artist to refuse service to you because I don't want to support the Trump administration. You can't have it both ways, people. (laughs) You can't have it both ways. I'm sorry, but you kind of sort of should be designing clothes for Melania Trump. It sucks. Okay. It sucks. But I'm just saying, at least right now, while uh, the Supreme Court is in deliberations, maybe uh, design a dress. <laughs> okay? It, it, at least they are literally in deliberation right now. So to, maybe you to should. design a dress or not. Yeah. The Supreme Court is literally in deliberations right now and at any second could decide whether or not it's okay to discriminate against gays. So maybe you should make a dress. Jesus. So moving on to our next news. Yeah. Yeah, No one says it has to be great. It doesn't have to be your A game. Make it out of uh, McDonald's wrappers. (laughs) For all I care. Speaking of McDonald's rappers, have did you hear the news about about uh President Trump's fucking diet? No. Uh Corey Lewandowski has a new book called Let Trump Be Trump. It's a pro-Trump book, but in in an attempt within the book to paint Trump as a hardcore guy, as like an alpha male. He described a, uh, you know, a typical diet, Donald Trump's typical diet. And uh, apparently in one sitting, Donald Trump would sit down and eat two Big Macs. Okay. And two filet fish sandwiches and a small chocolate shake. That's one meal for Donald Trump. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? That's the heart attack. <laughs> that's that's the heart attack challenge is what that is that's crazy yeah that's that's not a normal person's diet that is disgusting that is gross not only that but then 
um, the New York Times uh, followed Donald Trump for a day, for a couple of days, and tried to paint like a typical day in the life of Donald Trump. And apparently, um, he drinks up to 12 cans of Diet Coke a day. Really? Wow. Yeah. Which is crazy, because, like, who is he? My aunt. Because <laughs> that's like every aunt I had in the 80s. Like, I'm pretty sure that's, like, my aunt and my aunt's and Tab Soda. Yeah. Remember Tab? Tab, yes. Yeah. People were like, oh, this is low in calories, so it's healthy. I'm going to drink 18 of these today. <laughs> God, that was awful tasting stuff. Oh, yeah, that was fucking horrible. Yeah, but in this pro-Trump book by Corey Lewandowski, uh, Trump's former campaign guy, um, in this pro-Trump book just happened to be an inside look at the worst fucking diet imaginable. So CNN questioned Corey Lewandowski about Trump's diet, and this guy tried to spin it as a positive. Yeah, nice. It's always worth a shot. Eat so much because he works hard. He is the he he pushes everyone to work as as hard as possible because he's the hardest working person. He's there to eat and then he's done and then he's out the door before anyone else working as hard as anyone. Like okay, fuck you, Corey Lewandowski. <laughs> he's not eating two Big Macs, two filet fish sandwiches, a small chocolate shake, and downing four uh, cans of Diet Coke during a lunch because he's such a hard worker. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm not playing that either. Yeah. Anyway, that's gross. Fuck Corey Lewandowski. Also, I haven't cared for the Comedy Central show The Opposition until recently when, during one segment, the host Jordan Klepper uh, decided that while he was talking about Donald Trump moving the American embassy to Jerusalem, um, that while they were discussing this on the show, he would eat the entire meal. He called it the MAGA meal challenge. <laughs> and so they're discussing uh, uh, Donald Trump completely engulfing the Middle East in flames and riots and uh, causing a whole new generation of terrorists to hate america yeah he's there trying to eat two big macs two filet fish sandwiches and a small chocolate shake and it's amazing because he like almost vomits a number of times and he like <laughs> loses it like he loses it it's so amazing it's a really great video it's on youtube anyway moving on you know that we live in an odd news cycle bunny yes when there's controversy rocking the world of NPR's A Prairie Home Companion. Uh-huh, okay. How's, how is that going? Like, what is wrong with America that even in that bland, folksy, old folks home radio show is rife with scandal? So, uh, the original host and monologuing raisin, Garrison Keeler left Prairie Home Companion. Um, but now, Garrison Keeler is one of many uh, powerful white men accused of and or harassing women and so now a prairie home companion is is wanting to change their name to uh distance themselves from garrison keeler and a prairie home companion and 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 what would they change the name to i don't know but i have some thoughts for them i have a few options for them okay okay uh, so here are some possible options for the new name of a Prairie Home Companion. It's white people time. <laughs> like that one. I thought it captured the essence essence of a Prairie Home Companion. Here's another one. Uh -huh. Grandpa, wake up. Your show is on. <laughs> yeah. oh, that was a good one. This is a good one if they want to kind of change formats a little bit. Uh Bloody stump deity aneurysm. Bloody stump deity aneurysm. Good. Yeah, like if Garrison Keeler is gone, you really do kind of get control of what you want the show to be. Maybe you want to go in a completely different direction. Have a lot of Norwegian death metal, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just, you know, gore it up. Gore it up. <laughs> 
So here's another. Here in that same vein, Cannibal Holocaust, the radio show. Good, good. I think that's just, a damn fine name. Yeah, it's just a bunch of skits and a bunch of uh, funny bits, and then it, they pick some random audience members and kill and eat them. Cool. Just an idea. Just an idea I had. You know, take it or leave it. They can take it or leave it. Garrison Keillor has been uh, replaced with folksy mandolin player Chris Thiele, and he's okay. He's kind of like Garrison Keillor, but without the ability to produce a good monologue, but with actual music skills, which is good, because uh, Garrison Keillor was always, let's sing a song, Galveston, because he's like 80 years old and he's trying to sing a song and it's just ridiculous now there's someone who with actual musical talent <laughs> on the show and so that's good yes maxwell my son whom i love yes maxwell uh, we have a guest we have a guest what that never happens who is the guest maxwell uh, the hulk buster he needs to say the something. hulk buster and the hulk buster has something he needs to say okay what do you have to say hulk buster no i'm right down here okay Go okay. ahead, Hulkbuster. Well, well, I really tried to get Hulk from that rampage, but why I was hitting that coffee cup and that wall was because that he was hitting me and he threw me and he got my arm off, so I had to distract him while my arm was getting fixed, and I even punched him in the face. Nice. Good job, Hulkbuster. Wait, I think the I think the Incredible Hulk is having a rampage over there by the Christmas tree. You better stop him. It worked. <laughs> so Illinois has some crazy alcohol laws, and they're going through some shit right now, which mirrors the same problems that we're having here in Oklahoma. So apparently in Illinois, no store is allowed to sell cold beer except for liquor stores. Really? Okay. Yeah, so you, go to a, you go to a store or like Walmart or some shit, warm beer. Just a bunch of warm beer. The only place you can get cold beer is at a liquor store. They do that they they do that to try and stop people from being Eyes, a life-saving sort of thing. In here in Oklahoma, um, you the only place you can ever buy wine is at a liquor store. Yeah. You can't go to any other store other than a liquor store to buy wine. It only exists. Well, Colorado is like that here too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but warm beer—that's a quality issue. You know, yes, it is. that's gross. So now people in Illinois want to vote on being allowed cold beer, but a massive lobbying group is stopping uh, the vote from happening. And who is the massive lobbying group? The owner of all of Illinois liquor stores. Go figure. Because they don't want that to happen. The same thing, the same thing in, in Oklahoma, only we uh, only, uh, all stores in Oklahoma sell low point beer. So a beer that I get in Oklahoma, it, unless I get it from a liquor store, beer in Oklahoma that I get from like Walmart or the supermarket is actually uh, less strong than a yeah. beer I would drink in Arizona. 3.2 like from what I believe. Yeah. And so people in Oklahoma wanted to vote against that, but uh, it was shot down. And it was shot down because... A, there is a powerful group of of people uh, who own all of the liquor stores who do not want us to have our goddamn rights, Bunny. <laughs> anyway, it's upsetting. Yes. I so, don't blame you. Yeah. So, Bunny. Yes. No, I know you. I know that back in the day. You were a huge fan of the boy band, the Jonas Brothers. Oh, I was with their with their promise rings. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. What was your favorite song of the Jonas Brothers? Uh, smack my bitch up. 
smack my bitch up. That was a good song. Well, the Jonas Brothers broke up a long time ago, and uh, Joe Jonas, the older one, I believe, he's had a career resurgence. Uh, he's acted a little bit. He has a song. Uh, he has a, a, a song on my phone right now that I listen to all the time. It's really good. So he's apparently a talented musician. And now he is campaigning to play a superhero. And uh, he wants to play a super, a major superhero. He's campaigning to play this character. He's asking his fans to just bug the studio to get him to star in this movie and i actually have no problem with it okay so let me tell you what major superhero former boy band singer joe jonas wants to be okay what does he want to be nightwing nightwing okay no. Per I think I think he's perfect for it and I'll tell you why. I don't give a fuck about Nightwing. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about Nightwing enough to be upset. Joe Jonas is a handsome man. He seems fairly talented. He has black hair, abs. He's he's fine enough for me to play Nightwing. Yeah. You know? There I don't care about Nightwing or DC enough to be upset over Joe Jonas wanting to play Nightwing. <laughs> I think he'd be <coughs> You make a valid you know? point. Yeah. Like, I, I don't care enough to be upset. I wish, I, although I know it's not going to happen, I wish that if they do have a Nightwing film, that they at least keep Nightwing in his uh, 90s mullet. That would be good. That would be good. There, there's, that's the whole problem with this century. There is not nearly enough mullets. Yeah. Yeah, Nightwing had an amazing mullet in the 90s, and I think that, uh, at least in my mind, that's in in integral to the entire character. He has to have that. He yeah. has to have a mullet, or else I don't care about <laughs> character. He needs this mullet, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. And finally, Bunny, just today, they finally made official the fact that Disney is buying a massive stock in 20th Century Fox. That was going to happen sooner or later. Disney's going to start wanting to absorb the other studios, sure. Yeah. Now, Disney is uh, buying a huge stock in Fox. They will not Fox News or the Fox Network, but they will own uh, so much. There's good news and bad news to that. The good news is that from here onwards, Marvel will own the X-Men. They're with Fox? Nice. Okay. They're with Fox. There's also negatives. Disney and Marvel will now own Deadpool. Okay. Disney can't make a Deadpool movie. No. In fact, Marvel can't make a Deadpool movie. The best thing about Deadpool, like it had to have been made in a studio that wasn't Disney or Marvel because they just couldn't do it. They couldn't do that film at all. Yes. That, is, positive that is very true. Yeah, there's 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 positives and negatives. There's positives and negatives to this. The real negative part is that apparently 20th Century Fox doesn't own the Fantastic Four. They own the distribution rights to any Fantastic Four movie. The characters are still owned by this uh, conglomerate organization. So they still Marvel still doesn't have the Fantastic Four, or um, Galactus, or the Silver Surfer, or more importantly, Doctor Doom. I was really upset about that. Yeah. But down the road in Phase 4 or whatever of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we definitely could see the, the Avengers fighting against Magneto. 
or uh, Spider Man hitting it off with some like a young Kitty Pride or something. Yeah. Or um. Or what will prob what will most definitely be happening eventually? Uh, Avengers versus X Men. That would be that would be good. <sighs> Because it was always a strange relationship in the comic books. We'll definitely have to wait like three or four years. But yeah, no, that's probably most definitely happening. But it is bad that Marvel, that Disney owns Marvel, Disney owns ABC, Disney owns uh, 20th Century Fox, Disney owns just so much. Disney owns so much. Uh Uh-huh. Eventually, just Disney and Amazon are going to own everything. <laughs> yes. I believe with this, Disney now owns a sizable chunk of Hulu. But the fact that Marvel now has the rights to X-Men is just a side effect of what Disney is trying to do. Disney reached an agreement with Netflix, and Disney was is giving all of their movies to Netflix. That's why Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is on Netflix right now, is because anything new that comes out through Disney, period, Netflix gets right now. But Disney finally wised up and said, oh, shit, we're Disney. We can do this shit on our own. So they they will be leaving Netflix in, like, 2018 or 2019, That's and they're going to be so Disney will be starting their own streaming service, and they realized, wait, what movies do we have? Oh, we just have Disney movies? We need more movies. So the only reason they bought a, a massive chunk of 20th Century Fox is so that they can now have more product for their eventual streaming service. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's, that- that's, what, that's what I'm hating. Everybody is going to have their own streaming service. And nobody's going to be able to afford that shit. Nobody's going to be able to afford to support five, ten separate streaming services to see everything you want. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh, also, also, I believe this is uh, bad news. Disney now own the, owns the rights to all those fucking Avatar movies. All those Avatar movies? Which one? Well, the James yeah, Cameron thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. The blue, the blue avatars. They they now own Avatar, and they own because you got to remember, uh, James Cameron is apparently right now working on Avatars two through five. Yeah. Those are all going to be Disney movies now. James Cameron and Disney's Avatar. It makes sense because Disney already has an Avatar theme park. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Over there in Florida with Disney World, there's a whole Avatar Land. So it makes sense, but also it sucks. I'm really excited. I'm really super excited, but also it sucks. It it sucks. I'm gonna have to agree there. It's exciting because we can now see Wolverine as a member of the Avengers, and and also um, they can say the word mutants now. I yes. remember, you know, Avengers two. Um, uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, they got their powers from an experiment because of the Age of Miracles. And also in uh, ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., people were getting powers because they were in humans and they were given special gifts and we can't say the M word. Uh-huh. Yes. So it's just ridiculous. Now they can say mutant. You can say mutant now. You know? <laughs> it's about time. Yeah. Say it, Maxwell. Mutant. 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 There you go. Mutant. And Dad. Yes. Uh, we have a special guest. Another special guest? What? Who is this, Maxwell? Spider Man. Spider Man. Wow. What does Spider Man have to say? Well, I just want to say every time the Hulk, the Hulkbuster tries to kill me and crush me. Yeah. And eat me like a pizza. Amazing. Yeah, but I always dodge him. Yeah. In the wall or or weapon and stuff. Gotcha. Any stuff I do. Yeah. Um, okay, thank Bye. Yeah, thank you, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, that's yeah. it. I will be safe, Spider-Man. Thank you for caring about my safety. That is it for this installment of the Pope on Film News Smatterings. Yeah. News Smatterings. Yes, that was fun. And we might do it again if you stay under this rock, because I care about you, Bunny. <laughs> Wanted to make sure that you were privy to all the new shit. Yes. And I appreciate it. Good. <laughs>